Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be walking through how we can make this uh, weather system you can see in front of you. Um, just to explain sort of what's going on in this. So we've got a, uh, oh, let's me unlock my mouse. So uh, we've got a current weather, um, which is, you know, currently sunny. That's nice. An upcoming, I can see that it's going to get cloudy. There you go. It's just got cloudy. Um, then it's going to be sunny again. Then there's going to be some lightning. Then it'll be cloudy. Then it's going to be a lightning storm again. It's a bit tumultuous weather. You can see this works on a uh, tick system. At the moment, every 10 ticks, uh, the weather will change, an event will be fired, and this is how the UI is updating, how the particle systems are swapping. We can control this, we can control how frequently, so if, for example, every five ticks we wanted the weather to change. I mean, obviously, in a, in a real game, they wouldn't change this quick. You'd probably have it a bit longer, like 20, 30 ticks. So that means the weather fronts would last for a bit longer. This is all customizable in the inspector. So I'll just jump into the scene and just kind of show you how this is all set up and working. So we've got our uh, weather manager here, which has got a few variables on it. So there's the ticks between weather. So for example, I could set that to one and every tick, the weather would change. Uh, it'd get a bit confusing with the uh, particles, but I will sh I'll show you that. Do so you see that every single tick, the weather is changing. Um, it's confusing the particle <laughs> system. Uh, getting all the weather at once, uh, but obviously realistically you'd you'd probably have that at every 30 ticks. And I'll go into the scripts for these in a second, but the other thing we need to kind of note here is we've got a tick manager. So we've got our tick timer here, um, this is actually on my game manager script, and I've got a tick frequency. Uh, I've set that to one second, we could have multiple ticks, we could have um, just speed this one tick up or slow it down, so we could have a tick every two seconds or every half a second. But I've just set mine to one second. So then when I'm in my uh, like weather manager, I know that ticks between weather is how many sort of seconds almost between different weather types. And then the only other thing really is I've got a UI manager, which is also listening to the tick. And then that's, you know, updating the sprites on the page. So I won't go massively into the UI manager. Uh, it's kind of not the point in the video. I, I will show you the kind of code and quickly walk through it, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, but the first place I want to start is in our game manager script. So let's just open that up and bring it over. So you can see here that I've got my tick frequency. Uh, I've set this to one in the inspector. I defaulted it at 0 0.2 originally, just while I was testing to make sure the tick was firing quickly. And then I've got um, so two ints here. I've got my current tick, uh, which obviously starts at zero. And I've got a public uh, static property uh, called current tick and that's just going to return whatever our tick is and this means that we can get this uh, value without needing to make a singleton um, or like referencing our game manager or finding it in the scene we can just access it straight away and then I've got a private float uh, last tick time and then like our current tick uh, I've got current game time this one's a float not an in and then I've just got a public static action on tick and this is the event that's fired every time we uh, meet our threshold to tick. Ignore the awake function, that's just locking the cursor to the screen. So then in our update, I'm just running our tick method. And then the tick method, all it's doing is saying uh, current game time, and then we're adding time.delta time to this. You could also do like real time since startup if you wanted to do that, but time.delta time works just as well. And then we can say that if our current game time is greater than our last tick time plus the tick frequency, so if this threshold has been met, then we are going to set our last tick time to the current game time. We're going to call our on tick event, and then we're just going to increase our current tick. So this is the actual, like how many ticks have elapsed since we started playing the game. So this is very scalable. We can use this in other projects. Uh, nothing's kind of connected. This isn't referencing anything else. It's just a self-sustaining kind of tick manager. Okay, so then let's go over to our weather manager. So in our weather manager script, uh, we've just got quite a few variables and there's a lot of stuff going on in here, but I'll just go through it sort of top to bottom so we can uh, see what's going on there. So I've got my private int ticks between weather. So like I said, that's currently 10. So, and I know, so that's currently 10. Um, and I know at the minute that every tick is a second long. So this is essentially every 10 seconds will change our weather. If our tick was every half a second and then we waited um, 10 ticks, that'd obviously be five seconds. So those two kind of work in parallel to control how fast stuff's happening in your game. Probably makes more sense to have a tick every second so that's fine uh, and then I've got a private int which is our weather queue size this is mainly just for the UI like being able to forecast what's actually coming up in the weather because in a lot of systems like this for example if you were making like a Stardew Valley type thing or Harvest Moon 
you'd go to your TV, you'd see the forecast and you'd kind of know what's coming up in the day. So this queue kind of allows for that, like you know ahead of time what random weather is being picked. So then I've got a current weather tick, uh, which just goes up every tick. And then once this uh, int is greater than this int, then we know that we've um, it's time to call the new weather in. And then I've just got a private weather, uh, which is an enum, which I'll show you in a second, uh, called current weather, and I'm defaulting that to sunny. And then I've just got a public accessor property called current weather, and that's just returning our current weather. And then obviously I've got the private queue, uh, which is the weather queue. And I've just got some particle systems, just for the demonstration. Obviously, these this will be more dependent on what's going on in your uh, scene. You may not have particle systems, you may have like sprite animations or just something else. Um, so this is just for demo purposes. But then another important thing is we've got this public static action, uh, which I'm passing in a weather, which when I call on weather change, I'll be passing in the current weather and then the queue of weather as well, which is obviously our weather queue. And in our start function, I'm just stopping all of the particle systems and then I'm gonna fill the queue and then I'm gonna change weather. I call this at the start just to set up the weather system in the first place. And then in our on enable, um, I'm just subscribing to our tick event. And in our tick event, every time we tick, I'm gonna increase the weather tick. So once this is greater than or equal to our ticks between weather, then we're just gonna set our weather tick back to zero and we're gonna change the weather. Um, so before I go into the actual like changing weather and stuff, let's go into our weather enum. So this is our enum uh, weather. And I've decided in my game, it'll be different in your game, obviously, but uh, the weather can either be sunny, cloudy, uh, it can be raining, it can be lightning, or it can be snowing. And then I've just got weather underscore max, which just returns the value of snow. I'm using this to get the last index of our weather enum that's like a valid enum. So it's a valid value. So I can do random dot range between zero and our weather dot weather max, which is going to return snow in this instance, which would be four. I'm going to get a random number between zero and four, and then I can call change weather and pick a random weather from uh, this enum. And this will make sense in a second when I, I show you the weather changing system, which I'll do now. Okay, I'm just jumping in to kind of go over enums again. Um, just there's a timestamp, you can skip to the next bit if you already know what an enum is. Uh, but I don't feel like I explained them well enough. It's one of those that I I know how they work, but it's hard conceptually to pass that along. So I just thought we'd go through it uh, on the actual C Sharp reference uh, page. And actually, they've got seasons instead of weather types, but you know it's interchangeable. So uh, an enum or an enumeration type is a value type defined by a set of named constants of the underlying integral numeric type uh, to define an enumeration type use the enum keyword and specify the names of the enum members so they've got uh, season spring summer autumn winter by default the associated constant values of enum members are of type int uh, they start with zero and they increase by one uh, and this follows the definition text order you can explicitly specify uh, any other integral numeric type as an underlying type of enumeration type oh that's so Wordy. So you can see how I had so much trouble explaining this in the video. Uh, you can also explicitly specify the associated constant values as the following example shows. So we've got an enum here called error code. It's of type, uh, integral numeric type of a short, and their values are none, which is equal to zero, unknown equal to one, connection lost equals 100, outlier reading equals 200. So you can define these values yourself, uh, but if you don't, um, they're just going to be zero, one, so spring would be zero, summer would be one, autumn would be two, uh, winter would be three. But unlike an array or a list or uh, something like that, you can't do uh, like weather.count or weather.length. It's hard to know how many items are inside the list. There's no sort of extension to that. So in our example here, uh, we've got weather max and I'm equaling that to snow. So this is almost acting as our uh, like weather.count or that length sort of functionality that you'd have in a, a list or an array or something like that. Uh, we're doing weather.max and we're just equaling that to snow. So essentially all we're doing is setting weather max to four. So when we use this, uh, we're gonna get the fourth index, which is gonna be snow in this case. Uh, so that's all the, the weather max is doing. But let's just get back to the video. So the fill weather queue, uh, we're calling that in at Starks. We need the queue to be full to then change the weather. So in our fill weather queue uh, function, uh, we're gonna assign a new weather queue to our weather queue variable. And then I'm gonna go into a for loop and I'm gonna say that for, uh, for in equals i, whilst i is less than the weather queue size, 
So in this case, I've set uh, five. So we're going to fill up our weather queue with five items. And I'm going to get a temp weather from our get random weather function. Then we're going to on queue the temp weather. So I'm going to add it to the queue. So when you on queue something, you kind of, it's just like an actual queue, like you're queuing in line for a bank. Like if you joined the back of a line, you would on cube yourself into that queue. And then I'm just debug uh, dot login, uh, what the weather is and what the index is, just so I can see what's being filled into that uh, array. Uh, and actually, let's see that work. So if I go over to the console, so you can see here in the console that when I ran it last, uh, weather was snow at index zero, uh, the weather was lightning at index one, the weather was cloudy at index two, and the weather was snow at index three. And you can see here, this is because in I'm a weather manager, I've got a queue size of four, so it's picked for uh, weather types. So in our get random weather function, I'm just making a name called random weather. You'll see that I have a bool up here because I for a game I was using, I needed it to rain all the time to test some stuff. So um, just ig ignore this. Let's get rid of this just so we're not uh, confusing people. So random weather equals unity dot random dot range between zero and weather dot max plus one. And I'm casting weather dot max um, to an int. And so we know that weather.max equals snow. So snow uh, is the fifth one, but it's index four because it's zero based. And random.range is uh, inclusive of the first value, so zero, but it's exclusive of the last value. So we have to add one. Um, so this is going to return a random.range between zero and four. And then I'm just going to cast our int as a weather um, and return that. So what this is doing is because an enum is basically just ints under the hood, we can actually cast them to our enum type of weather and it will assign the appropriate weather. And the great thing is, is when you uh, sort of like debug.log your weather function, it gives you that readable name that you've assigned, not the int value. Uh, so it doesn't say that the, the weather is zero, it says the weather is uh, sunny, which is obviously great, that's what we want. So that's gonna fill our queue and then we're gonna change the weather, which is a different function. So so when we change the weather, we're gonna set our current weather to the thing that was the first in line, essentially, on, that, uh, on our weather queue. So you can see that here. So we're gonna start sunny. The first weather type in our queue is gonna be cloudy, and then it's uh, lightning, rain, and then snow. So when you on queue something, it's gonna get added to the back of the queue. When you dequeue it, it's gonna come from the front of the queue and it'll move over. And then because we've taken a weather type out of the queue, uh, we just wanna stick another one on the end to maintain that queue and keep it going. And then I'm just gonna call our on weather change um, invoke function. I'm gonna pass in what our new current weather is. And I'm gonna pass the queue along as well. That's great for our UI so we know, so that can pick the right sprite for what's coming up in the weather forecast. And then I've just got a switch function here. So it's going to switch on current weather. And then if our weather is sunny, it's going to stop all of the particles. If it's cloudy, it's going to stop all of the particles, but play the cloud particles. So this bit's going to be very dependent on what you're doing in your game. So for example, we could probably take this out and put this into a like particle manager. because it's not really to do with the, manage the weather management, it's to do with the particle management. So really we could uh, make a particle manager, subscribe to this event, and then we can do all of this stuff in its own function. Uh, but I'm just keeping it on the weather manager because it was easier for me to do for the video. So then just to show a very practical example of how this uh, weather change event is working and how we're invoking our weather queue and our current weather, we can go over to our UI manager. So our UI manager has a array of images and these are our weather icons. And then we're just subscribing to our weather changed event as well as our tick event. This is just to update the time on the display. Uh, but we've got our weather changed event, which we're subscribing to our on weather change uh, event from the weather manager. So this is just going to take in a the current weather and it's going to take in the weather queue. So here in our weather changed event, I'm going to have, uh, I've got my weather icon prefabs array. And I know that element zero in that array is the slot on the far most left. And this is the current weather. So I'm taking the current weather in and I'm just adding a sprite to it. I'm choosing the sprite for that weather front. And then I'm just updating the current weather text to what the current weather is. And again, because it's a weather type, not an int, uh, we can read that in our, and then I'm just creating an index uh, and I'm starting this at one. And then I'm saying for each item in our weather queue. So uh, every kind of weather that's stacked up in our queue, I'm just gonna set 
the icon prefab at that index is sprite to the correct sprite and then I'm going to increase our index so that loops around. Uh, this was an old function we don't actually need that. So to see this all working again in the inspector, now you've seen the code, just to kind of re-visualize what's going on. So our current weather is cloudy, and we can see that, oh, lightning's forecast for most of the day. Um, so we can see that as the tick goes up, when we get to tick 10, we're going to swap over and the lightning moves along. And we've got lightning for the rest of the day. Let's just, it's a bit boring to kind of just look at the, just lightning. That's just snow as well. So it's going to rain now. It's currently raining. It ticked 10. We're going to dequeue the lightning, move that into the current weather slot. And then we're, got, we're going to on queue something else to the end. So we've got snow for the rest of the day now. Um, again, it is all random. If you wanted to, you could wait certain uh, events or you could have it so every 50 ticks you get a bad weather. Um, so you could be like sunny most of the time, but then every 50 ticks uh, it starts to rain or and then every 75 ticks or or if the tick count is divisible by seven and nothing's left over then it could be a thunderstorm um, so you can do quite a lot obviously with the sort of ticks but as as this plays along here so uh, currently it's snowing we're going to dequeue the sunshine and we're going to add on cue something to the end of the forecast so we're going to uh, on cue some more snow but yeah that's just how i set up this basic weather forecast system uh, here in unity so the project files for this are available over on Patreon. Uh, I'm going to include everything, including the particles, the sprites, etc. Uh, the link for that is in the description below. If you want any more sort of like clarifications on anything I didn't cover in the video, uh, let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.